Hello YouTube, welcome to the dojo, you're here with Samurai Man, and today we have the Transformers Deluxe Generation slash Beast Machines Tankor. And they did a really good job on this figure, I have to say, lots of fantastic paint apps. The robot mode looks like as it should, the vehicle mode looks like it should, and it's very nicely done overall. This is very well done, I'm a little surprised about how well I like it. Uh, the uh, tank mode I don't care for so much, but I never did. I mean, as soon as I saw it in the show, I didn't really care for it. So I can't really, you know, complain about the toy. It, it, it does look exactly as it does in the show, so that's good, but bad because I don't care for that. But the robot mode I love, so that's fine. You see, he got plenty of beautiful blue, metallic-y blue paint apps and molded in details. Some yellow, just kind of like break it up. And some red as well, some gunmetal colors. Yeah, these treads here are very cool looking. I love these treads. They look really mechanical and nice. There's gears and pistons. Everything is flowing about. It's coming to the back treads as well. You see them here. Cool. There he's got here up on this machine logo. I don't remember what they're, they were called. They're machines. I don't know. I don't remember. They, were, they weren't Predacons. They weren't Decepticons. They were something else. And They were something else, and I just can't remember what they were. But it's there, and it looks nice, and I like it. So cool. Overall, they did a great job on this mode. He's got his blaster thing that is on a hinge so you can bring it back and up and around the only thing is it doesn't rotate which is unfortunate so that's the one downside you grip these things here and pew, there goes the blasting piece so cool it is very show accurate it does have that same kind of like cone oops yeah you can see it's very bendable this blasting this projectile very bendable so be careful what you want to do is kind of pull this out hold it out and then put in the, the projectile there you go, because it is just a fiction blast, so there. But as I was saying, yes, it's got that very nicely done cone shape to the end, comes inward, just like it does in the show. My one complaint would be the mold, the or not the mold, but like the plastic color, this here plastic color. It's got a green tint to it. I don't know if it's coming off so well on camera, but in person it's got a very, very... You know, you can see it very much like this seafoam green tint to it when it should just be like gray or silver I would have accepted white maybe even I don't know, but this green is kind of weird I mean he, he wasn't green at all in the show. Maybe it's supposed to be like oh rhinox rhinox is green So we threw in some green just so you know, I don't know, but yeah, he's green. He's got some green on him But anyways, we'll go ahead and transform him. It's very simple. So transform this guy we'll go ahead and split up the legs We got these pegs here that just go into these holes and they hold it very securely, so just pull them apart. Go ahead and get this cannon kind of out of the way. Fold up in this whole chest head area. It's got these two kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Hectagon, hectagon looking shapes. And they go in, in these hectagon looking holes. So there you go, That's uh, that pegs in. Just kind of fold it out. We've got this double hinge here. It's kind of like the spine. Rotate out the arms. Let's get them out of the way. And then bring up this whole chest component. Just fold it all in. And then there's these two tabs at the shoulders here. Ooh, if you can see them, there you go. Tabs right here, these gunmetal pieces that just tab in very nicely. Fold down this whole head component. That'll cover up all that gappiness, which is nice. And there we go, done with the head. Take the feet, rotate them at the thigh. Bring them around, there we go. And come around to the back. What we're gonna do here is we have these blue panels. Flip them backward, I guess. That'll hold in this, or that'll fill in this hollow areas which is cool I do like that appreciate that they filled it in fold down the feet to make his nice tread feet I'm like that kind of just get him stand in for now well it's kind of weird because I got this cannon over here but I'll deal with that in a sec fold out the hands we'll just leave them like they are for now because they are very cool and I'll go over that in the articulation they are very well done and then just go ahead and bring down this cannon if you want to have it like that if you want to have it just like flesh or flush with his body you can or if you want to have it more like this Makes a bit longer, but that is accurate if he wants to attack some maximals. But, you know, for now we'll keep it down like that. So there he is. Here we have Tankor in his robot mode. And again, I like it very much. This is spot on with how he looked in the show. So, very cool. I do love this very much. As you can see he's got these kind of like missile pods. I don't think he ever used them in the show, but they look nice. Again, I like asymmetry. So, he got these missile pods here. I want to say there's like a camera thing going on right here. Not too sure. He's got, again, his machine logo. I don't remember what they're called. I think they are Viacons. There we go. Yeah, they are Viacons, I want to say. So that's the Viacon logo. I'm pretty sure that's what they were. And again, he's got these nice, you can see them more prominently now, these yellow stripes going through it that look very nice. Break it up a little bit. 
And underneath, you can see if you lift these shoulder pads, it's got some really nice silvery gunmetal, you know, paint applications with some circuitry molded in. And it's just so shiny and well done. They did a good job on that. Very cool. Ooh, he's falling over. And you come around to the back again, more of that circuitry panel lines there going cool. More gunmetal. Got again for the underside of those panels that we flipped over. Some tread looking lines around them. Circuitry around the thighs. That looks really cool. Nice moldings on the forearms, on the back, and on the front. And it just, they did a good job on this guy. I, I've seen this guy get some complaints, but wow, I think they did a great job on him. So, kudos. So, taking a closer look at his face, you can see he's got, again, that faceplate with all these little holes in them. I don't know what the holes are for, but that's accurate. Some nice, again, little missile pods on the sides of his head. I think those are very cool. He's got that kind of like mono eye look going. He's got like a visor. If you can kind of see, it kind of gets thinner on the inside, but it is supposed to be like one kind of visor thing. I remember on the old toy, I don't have it anymore, but I remember on the old toy, I think it had like this gimmick where he had the visor eye, and I think there was like one eyeball kind of thing, and you could like switch it back and forth from the back of the head, and like like the, the, the light piping would show through it. And I, I'm pretty sure, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I remember that being on the old Tankor toy that I used to have, but a lot of people were like, oh, that toy was a lot better. But honestly, I think this is way better than that, from what I remember. I couldn't even transform that. And maybe that was just because I was a little kid and I couldn't transform things very well at the time. But I don't even think, I, I don't remember I ever was able to transform that one. But this one is intuitive, it's, it's simple, and it's fun. And I don't know, I just think this is way more show accurate. Because the other one was black and orange, I remember that. Which it wasn't at all in the show. This one's way more color accurate, so I think this is a lot better. Unfortunately, I don't. And also, I want to point out, he does have these red, vi the red visor kind of light piping situation going on, but it's not exactly light piping. You see, it's a much thicker plastic. It's not exactly that clear light piping plastic. So maybe you can get some light through it, but I seriously doubt it because it's pretty thick. It's, it's a pretty solid color. It's not really clear at all. So I don't know exactly how it's supposed to work, but... Looks nice. I like it. I like it for what it is. Looks cool. Now going over the articulation, I just want to start off by saying I didn't expect much from the articulation from this guy. He was a pretty static figure in the show. In the show, his legs didn't even move. He just rolled along. So I wasn't really expecting much from that. He moved his arms pretty well. I mean, I guess in the show, he didn't really, again, he wasn't known for doing anything too crazy. It was pretty much like cannon flips down, he fires. He rolls and he fires. And he might rip something every now and then. But that's about it. That being said, this guy has fantastic articulation. He is just so beautifully done with his articulation. What you can do is, we'll start with the shoulders. You can rotate the shoulders outward, and these panels move with it, just to give you a little bit more oomph. So you can't bring his arms out, and that off the bat is more than I would have expected from the shoulders. You can rotate them all around. Again, 360, and this panel moves. We have here a bicep swivel and a bicep hinge and for technically transformation an elbow hinge so wow he has a lot of movement in his arms alone not to even mention I haven't mentioned it he does have an elbow swivel as well he has a hinge and a bend and he's got like let's see one we'll start at the shoulders and say one two three four five six seven, if you count this claw, points of articulation in the arm alone. From shoulder to his, his, I guess, wrist. We'll call that seven points of articulation. That's awesome. You can get a lot out of this. It's, this it's just I love the swivel here. I love the bend. They did a great job on that. I love the pincing claws. This is awesome. Look how wide you can get those claws. He's got a lot going on. I really wish we can get like a Vector Sigma key or something for him to hold for the old show. And yeah, they, they just did a great job on this guy. You can even see it molded in the inside of the hands. He's got, I don't know, I guess those are little little bullet, or not bullet, little blasters on his palms, I guess. I guess those are palms. They look nice. I like them. I like this how they did a little bit of gunmetal here just to go along with these pincing claws. So yeah, really cool. Anyways, nothing at the waist. Don't really need it. Thighs can go outward. Again, I wasn't expecting much, but they gave him a good amount. Outward, rotation due to transformation. Upward, backward, bend at the knee. And even his, I guess, ankles, we can call these ankles, they move his feet, again, transformation, but they do it. So, yeah, this guy's got a ton of articulation that he really just didn't even need, but they decided to throw it in, so I can appreciate that, no problem. Head can also move. It goes about that much, but once you try getting even more, like, you can see it's 
pretty big head with some junk in the way. You don't really need to move that much. It's like he pretty much only moved it like about that much anyway in the show. He didn't really do anything too dynamic. This cannon again, up and down. He's got this full range of movement on that cannon. So it's really up to you. If only he could, again, if he could rotate, that'd be perfect. But it's still not bad. So here we have Tankor paired up with Rhinox, his previous incarnation, which is so unfortunate. I hated that about the show. Why did they make Rhinox and a Tankor into an evil D-bag? I mean, come on. Rhinox was awesome. He's one of my favorites. Look what they did. They didn't need to do that. Why did you do that? But anyways, I think it made for a good story. Because honestly, yes, I hated that about what they did to Rhinox. I absolutely hated that Rhinox was turned evil. You wouldn't in a million years see that actually happen. But it did make for a very moving story and plot development. So I can see why they went through that. But anyways, yes, I also have him here with the original Beast Machines. Uh, I want to say Deluxe Jetstorm. I don't remember what they were called back then. I don't know if they were still called Basics or Deluxes. But as you can see, yes... I think Jetstorm could use an upgrade too. Jetstorm and Thrust, again, if they continue going through all the generations of Transformers like they are doing now, and we just pretty much get all new figures of, or all new updates of figures from lines, that'd be amazing. We have Rhinox, we have Rat Trap from Beast Wars, we have Tankor from Beast Machine, so if we can get a Thrust and Jetstorm, I'd be ecstatic about that. We have Skybites from Robots in the Skies. I'm trying to think what else. I think that's. It's for now. I don't think we have any other older series figures. Again, technically Scoop, I would consider Wedge. But since they didn't call him Wedge, I don't know. I'm assuming that's what they were going for. Or they could just be going for G1 Scoop, which is more likely. But I'm calling him Wedge for now. Um, yeah, I, th I don't know. I can't think of anything else at the moment off the top of my head. But if they could keep going through these lines and making updated figures... That'd be great. Oh, Armada, Starscream, and Megatron's coming out, so they're Armada also. So yeah, plenty of awesome old stuff that they're revamping that need it desperately, especially the Beast Machines lines, just because they're infamous for being known for not looking anything like the cartoon. So here I have the IDW Hasbro cover of the comic book that came with Tankor, and he actually is in it. If I can find the page, hopefully. Won't take me too long. Do -do -do. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh man, maybe this isn't the one. You know what? I think it was in the Rat Trap one. Oh wait, wait, nope, I found him. There he is. Bottom panel right there, if you can see it. There he is. And again, right here, you can see him more prominently. Tankor is not happy. He's like, I came here because the war was over. Look what you did, Dark Dream. You suck. That's basically what happened in this panel. But there you can see, he is much more of a white, whitish, silvery, chromey color. Whereas the toy's more green. But it's not terrible. I mean, it's I, I still think it's cool. It's growing on me. It's slowly just growing so on me. Transform Tankor back. We'll just start with the feet. Rotate them around. Rotate them around. Fold down these treads. Flip out these blue panels. Oops, flip them up. Or, bleh, bleh, bleh. flip them down. Not flip them up. Flip them down. Take this whole chunk. Flip it up. This whole headpiece. Or actually, I'm going to untab the chest first. There we go. Untab the chest. Then we'll flip up this whole compartment like that. It's on that double hinge, so what we're going to do is bring it all back downward. And then just get those pegs at the bottom of the feet. Make sure to tab them in properly. They are very secure once you get them in, actually, so that's good. They're very secure. I'm not worried about them coming on tab at all. Very nicely done. Fold up the hands, wrists, claws, whatever you want to call them. The whole component. Kind of just, un I, what I do is I take this hinge and I unfold it down with the feet at the knees and everything. That way it'll give you a little more room so you can fold this in. There you go. There are, there is like a little kind of like long skinny tab that's supposed to go into the other form. It doesn't really stick that well, but at the same time it doesn't really need to. I'm not worried about that. So, whoa. This just slid. Oh, what? I didn't even know it did that. I just learned something. This, this shoulder pad can slide back and forth. Oh, that's cool. I'm going to put that to use somehow. Anyways, cool, I just learned something in a review. The more you know, G.I. Joe, no one's half the battle. Anyways, yes, peg those. Oh, I lost my spot. Um, oh, yeah, peg these hexagonal tab peg holes. Yeah, pegs into the holes. Ah, I'm all over the place now. I think it's in. I don't know. I'm lost now. Anyways, there we go. Take the cannon, just rotate it upward, around. Bing, bang, boom. Back in action. 
Back to action. So we have Tankor back into his tank mode. Again, I, I'm not crazy about the tank mode, but that's accurate, and I wasn't crazy about it in the show. So there's that. Oh, I also forgot to mention, he does have these spinning saw blades. So if you want to put those used, again, show actor, he did use them. So there he is. Tankor, the menace, the blundering menace who became really smart because he got Rhinox in his body. You know, Rhinox shouldn't have been evil, and that was a dumb move on their part, but it made for good story. And feels and stuff but anyways the toy itself is very good i really love the robot mode tank mode is cool i like the color scheme it's very show accurate if we got a voyager size that'd be cool but i don't think it's necessary i think deluxe works for me i think this is fine the transformation's perfect for deluxe the scale is probably not the greatest depends on what other figures you get but Aesthetically, it looks great, so I don't think it needs to be a Voyager. There's nothing in the transformation that they really need to do differently. It transforms perfectly into both modes. So that's what I have to say about that. Anyways, guys, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel at YouTube. As well as follow me on Tumblr at Macation. And Twitter at Macation. And Instagram at Meccas of Ironheart. You find all my purchases, what's coming out, who's making what, pictures of my figures. I still need to take tons of pictures right now. But those will be up, hopefully within the week. And anyways, guys, take it easy. Have a great day. Until next time.